I am Gilbert. And I am George. We are Gilbert and George. Gilbert and George arrived on the UK art scene back in the early 1970s with their groundbreaking work, The Singing Sculpture. That performance art piece saw the duo singing along to a recording of the Great Depression classic, Underneath the Arches. It became a gallery hit across Europe and the pair rocketed to contemporary art stardom. Thanks to patron John Caldor, Australian audiences also got to see the singing sculpture when the duo performed at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and the National Gallery of Victoria in 1973. Today, Gilbert and George are renowned for their huge photo media works known as The Pictures. These ultra-colourful gridded works frequently utilise shocking imagery and they take aim at religious discrimination, homophobia and racism. Despite being both celebrated and condemned for challenging conventional notions of propriety, Gilbert and George enjoy phenomenal popularity around the world. Back in Australia to celebrate 40 years of John Caldor public art projects, tonight on Artscape, the internationally famous and notorious Gilbert and George. Gilbert and George, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you're you very kind. Much. From the very beginning, you wanted to reach beyond the confines of the gallery. You, you wanted to extend art for all, as, as your motto has always been. Yeah, it was quite interesting because in some way we found a new way of expressing ourselves. Because we went to an art school where formalism was it. Squares, lines, circles. But we managed to make a human art because we made ourselves the centre of the art. And that was the biggest uh, invention that we ever did. Still, it's extraordinary because you can make people feel, cry, and talk about emotion, talk about sexuality, talk about religion, yes. talk about everything. It is like a book. We are speaking to the world what we feel inside ourselves. All of the galleries where we exhibited, the commercial galleries, were ones where everything we believed in was taboo. Yeah? They, they only believed in form, and we could only show in those galleries. Such Regardless, as what, the things that you believed in that, that well, were taboo? We believed in emotion, and they didn't think you should have emotion in the gallery. We believed in true sentiment, which they thought was something to do with lower class greeting cards, not, not to do with culture. Mm. Yeah? Even colour was taboo. It should be grey, black, white, brown, lead. And these are things that you believed in or that were stirred up in you as reactions to what you were seeing yeah, we in knew, the art culture? We knew that an art that reaches people has to go beyond form. That the form must be there, but the form must carry the meaning over to the viewer. So uh, remind us again of singing sculptures because it was hugely successful and very, very much loved when you performed it in Australia. We're amazed that people still remember it so well. Even people who couldn't have been alive then <laughs> know about it. We're, we're amazed. It's the old it's cliche about the 60s. You know, too, too many people remember it even though they weren't even there, perhaps. It's a strange thing. We always think that it's quite a mystery why a table and two people singing a song with a glove and a stick should be such a magical combination. It was magical. And you had a stillness and a self-possession about you that was remarkable, particularly back then, because th this was the, the first of this art, really, of its kind that we'd seen, wasn't it? It was new, yes. How did it come about for you? How did you invent this work? We invented it because when we left St. Martin's School of Art, no, we felt a kind of outsiders who didn't fit into a system. And we went all to all the galleries to find out if they would like us to have a show with us. And they all said no. So we thought we have to become artists without a gallery. One day we found this extraordinary record and we played it and that's us. That's us. Underneath the arches, we dream our dream of ways. That, that song spoke to you, why? We just identified, it was like a, a finding our biography in an old record, yeah? And strangely, it's quite timeless, that record. Wherever you go in the world, you still see the tramp with the bottle of beer lying down. Where, wherever you go, when you get off the Euro train at Brussels, you're immediately confronted by Albanian drunks sitting on the pavement, it's extraordinary. And they would, they would know, know that song, the rain, the cold, the pavement, dreaming, hoping, being optimistic. Can you recall for us your, your very first meeting at St. Ah, Martin's Art School? Yes, quite interesting. 
<laughs> he took an interest in me. That's it. So he saw you first. I mean, I'm sure I saw him, but he took an interest in me. That was interesting. <laughs> no, I, think we were, I think we were apart because we believed in London as part of our art, and all of the other students believed in staying in the studio and working very hard, and filing <coughs> down that piece of wood or scrubbing hard at that bit of clay. And we thought you have to be alive in the city and an art student. Because every student was able to, to find himself because they didn't, they didn't tell you anything, really. No. No. There was opposition, especially when we left, but yes. when we were there, we felt very, very privileged. There were television crews from all over the world in there. It was, it was a very famous department. Not just the college, really, just that one advanced sculpture course, it was called. Yeah. Can you recall for me the moment when you both decided to become what you are, which is living sculptures, that your life would be the art? What was that moment? It wasn't a conscious decision in that way. It was something that came over us, like a cloud or a mood, we believe. Even if we were stranded, outside, we know nowhere to go. We always believe that uh, criticism and being attacked is very character building because you reflect on what they've said and try to find yourself in relation to what they're saying. Do you ever take the criticism and modify accordingly? No, certainly not. Okay. No, so we don't believe that somebody knows better than ourselves. <laughs> Th then we would have to give it up. They, they, should, they, should, they should do it then. Our motto is kill the art critic. <laughs> 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 or survive the art critic, which you, you certainly have done. Well, we do that, yes. The suits, the uniform, the look, the manner is, is all a part of your life and who you are. Why, at the very beginning, uh, did you adopt such a formal conservative look? No, because we went to the galleries with the suit on.